material textuality of the second part of the book, The Pilgrim's Progress, written by John Bunyan. The paperback was originally published by Oxford University Press in 1984, reissued in 1998. Here, the new edition was published in 2003 and reissued in 2008. In terms of the frontispiece, if you take a close look at the page unseen of the two sections in this book, the one on the verso gear is from the first part and the rectal one is from the second part. You will notice a great many of distinctions. The young man, Christian, is replaced by his wife, four children, and neighbor, Mercy. One interesting thing here is a proportion considering the portrait of John Bunyan and the characters here. In the first picture, Bunyan is considerably large compared with the lonely figure of Christian. And in the second part, the portrait becomes smaller and the six figures come to be the major parts of the frontispiece. It is not only because the number of main characters is increasing, but also for the reason of the change of atmosphere, mood, or we can say influence from solitary pursuing of spirit of God to companion journey to search for truth. As for the title page, the second part follows the rules of long S and Roman font mainly. However, the punctuation marks are quite different from what is shown in the first section, which I labeled in blue ones. Those punctuation changes make it easy for us to pause and read. If you look at the middle parts of the both sides, there is a word end. Now on the right hand, it forms a new line with all letters capitalized. And in the next line, safe arrival at the desired country as followed. This kind of course is more scientific and reader friendly. Besides, we can tell the right side basically follows the capitalization standard in the left, adding the phrase, the second part with each word's first letter capitalized. Changing the word journey and John Bunyan to all letters in capital forms. On the whole, the typography of the title page in the second part has somewhat standardized a bit and is much reader oriented. The author's apology part. We can see here on the right side, all the title words are Roman font with all letters capitalized without italics. The word pilgrim is the largest, following second part of the a little smaller and the author's way of sending forth his, the smallest compared with the other lines in the title. The below, uh, then below the topic, those lines are generally in Roman typefaces with the first letters in each line or in addressed information capitalized. Most of the oral carols or conversations are in italics. However, when it comes to the identity names of characters and places, as well as the emphasized verbs, which are marked in blue, are only in straight Roman fonts. The later paragraphs normally have an indentation for the first line. Now let's appreciate some illustrations. The drawings in the second part are less than in the first, with, with only two pictures excluding the frontispiece. The first illustration is Great Heart leading the pilgrims. There, there may be uh, indeed an element of self-portrait in Great Heart as a pastor of the little flock of pilgrims who guides and protects them from harm. And the four line verse at the bottom in AABB rhyme, 
almost all words are in straight form, fonts with only the name of leader Greatheart in italics. Meanwhile, the first letters of identity, group, and names of the characters are all capitalized. Well, let's move on to the comparison between the endings. On the versal side, italics of Phoenix with all letters capitalized as the end epilogue. However, after that, there is a conclusion part. The page, the end, in straight Roman fonts is actually the real ending. Whereas on the rectal side, Phoenix is no longer italics, but in straight Roman and right after it on the next page as explanatory notes of the whole book. But there is no such the end sign at last. In conclusion, we've talked about many material textuality concerning the second half of the pilgrim's progress, such as the front matter, frontispiece, title page, apology. We've learned some forms of much named dia, punctuation, marks, illustrations, and the way to lay out the page. When dealing with piracy, we now could understand what John Bunning has done to fight for the authenticity of the work. Well, that's enough talk for me. Um, thank you for your attention.